Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and I'm here to quickly go over one small concept I left out of our last video on definite integrals. In this video, I'm going to explain how and why some definite integrals can result in a seemingly negative area. Up until now, we've only gone over examples that result in positive answers. To see why that is, it's important to visualize the area we found as well as remember what a definite integral represents. As a reminder, a definite integral adds up all the area between the curve and the x-axis. However, in addition to that, it counts all the area that is above the x-axis as positive area and all the area that is below the x-axis as negative area. Since each of the areas found in the previous video are above the x-axis, that is why we got positive answers. However, if we had a function like this, and calculated the definite integral from 0 to 4, it would count all this area above the x-axis as positive and all this area below the x-axis as negative. To understand what the answer ends up being, it's helpful to think of integrals as net area accumulators. Basically, it takes all this positive and negative area and finds the net difference between them. So all this negative area would cancel all or some of this positive area to leave us with a negative, zero, or even still a positive result. To see this concept in action, let's do an example. Say we are asked to calculate the integral of 2 sine of x between x equals 0 and x equals 2 pi. Okay, our first step is to write this out as an integral. Since our function is 2 sine of x and our bounds are 0 and 2 pi, we would write it like this. Then, we'll want to find our antiderivative. Knowing our trig antiderivatives, we find that our antiderivative is negative 2 cosine of x. Again, if you are unsure about this antiderivative, you can always take the derivative of what you think it is, and if you get back the original function, you know you're right. Alright, returning to the problem, all that we have left is to plug in our bounds and solve. Plugging in our upper bound of 2 pi, we get negative 2 cosine of 2 pi. Next, subtracting what we get when we plug in our lower bound, this leaves us with negative 2 cosine of 2 pi minus negative 2 cosine of 0, or negative 2 cosine of 2 pi plus 2 cosine of 0. Evaluating this, we know that both cosine of 2 pi and cosine of 0 are equal to 1, which leaves us with negative 2 plus 2 or 0 as our final answer. To see how we got an answer of 0, let's draw our original function of 2 sine of x. For this problem, we wanted to evaluate the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Because of what we just learned, the integral took all of the area above the x-axis as positive and all the area below the x-axis as negative. And then, due to the symmetry of this function, the areas exactly cancelled each other out, which left us with our answer of zero. If this video helped you out, please, please, please tap that like button and subscribe to our channel to help us help more students like you. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.